Hi, my name is James Vick, and today I'll be uh, debating for the ant lion. Uh, the debate topic is which is a better predator, Anax Imperator, the Emperor Dragonfly, or Glenera Stratus, the ant lion. Um, all right, so opening statements. Um, the ant lion is only predatory in its larval stage, but during that time, the ant lion is vicious in how it targets and kills its prey. Ant lion larvae frequently dig holes in the ground, using their abdomens and heads to throw sand or dirt and then proceed to bury themselves, laying in wait for any passing ants or other small insects. If an insect falls or wanders into the pit, the antlion immediately seizes them with its jaws, feeding on their insides before throwing the empty skin out of the pit. Um, if the antlion's prey somehow escapes its jaws, the insect will fling sand onto the outer edges of the pit, causing sand to roll down the slope of the pit and push the prey back to the center where the jaws are. The larvae have sharp mandibles, flat shovel-like heads, and rotund bodies but undergo complete metamorphosis to emerge as an adult that looks quite like a damselfly in appearance. These adults do not eat, and so it is important that when they're in their larval stages, they are highly predatory, consuming enough prey to sustain themselves long enough to lay eggs after metamorphosis. Antlions are not a pest species and are actually considered beneficial to human society because they prey on pest, uh, pest species. Okay, go ahead. And I'm Lane Oxen. I will be debating for the Annex Imperator, commonly known as the Emperor Dragonfly. The emperor dragonfly, like many insects, spends most of its life cycle in its larval stage. During this stage, it spends its time underwater. It must also catch as much live prey as it can. It needs as much energy as it can get due to the fact that it molts up to 14 times while on the path to becoming a fully formed adult. Once the emperor dragonfly is ready to become a fully formed adult, it completely skips the pupil stage and goes through one final molt that takes place outside of the water. As an adult, the male emperor dragonfly is airborne for most of its life, searching for a suitable mate or prey that unknowingly wanders into its territory. The male is extremely territorial and will attack or harass any foreign intruder. The female emperor dragonfly avoids any male territory that has been claimed until she is ready to mate. Though the adult emperor dragonfly has the capability to hunt and survive in its adult stage, it still only lives for a short few weeks. During adulthood, the emperor dragonfly catches its prey by plucking it out of the air with its legs. For this to be possible, it must utilize its extremely fast reflexes and unique flying methods. These insects are extremely common in Great Britain. The emperor dragonfly is beneficial to human life throughout its entire life cycle. In its nymph stage, its main prey are harmful aquatic organisms such as mosquito larvae, and as an adult, it not only serves as a predator that removes pests from the ecosystem, but as a food source for birds and frogs. The emperor dragonfly can also be used by humans to determine if there has been a change in water quality of an area. Good. All right. So now we're going to get into the rebuttals. Um, we're going to compare information from our opening statements and provide additional information about our species. Um, so here's my rebuttal. Um, while the emperor dragonfly is surely a fearsome predator, it can't compare to the sheer brutality and efficiency of the antlion. Not only are the antlion's tactics witty, but it has a significant biological leg up on the emperor dragonfly in that its mandibles contain a, a toxin made from its stomach acid that can quickly and effectively dissolve the insides of its prey before consumption. If the sneaky pitfall trap tactics were not enough, insects that are caught by the mandibles have little hope of escaping as the toxin paralyzes them and leaves them helpless. The antlion is not only craftier than the emperor dragonfly, it is specifically engineered to be a deadly killing machine. And here's my rebuttal. Though the antlion has many attributes that make it an efficient predator, the emperor dragonfly is made to catch prey without the need for crafty tactics to make up for its shortcomings. While the pitfall trap of the antlion is useful, the emperor dragonfly needs no such tactics due to the fact that it is hardwired to be fast, efficient, and a ruthless predator. The emperor dragonfly uses a complex method that is both graceful and deadly to catch its prey. First, it detects its prey and calculates its trajectory. Once it has a lock on its target, it takes off and rotates its body to the trajectory of its prey and rapidly moves its head to keep the target inside of its field of vision. Once it has predicted its prey's movements, the emperor dragonfly will use this information and proceed to attack from underneath its prey. This method of attack causes the emperor dragonfly to rarely miss its mark, making it an extremely accurate and deadly predator. Okay, thank you. And then we're gonna get into our second rebuttals. Um, for me, the emperor dragonfly speed is quite impressive, but, it's undoubted, but it undoubtedly wastes an excessive amount of energy to catch its prey. 
Both the antlion and emperor dragonfly are mostly predatory only in their larval stages, eating seldom when they're adults. This means that they need to store energy for when they have to move around to, uh, move around to deposit eggs. Unlike the emperor dragonfly, the antlion is mostly sedentary, which allows it to store its energy rather than wasting it chasing its prey. The antlion is clearly a better predator because it can easily sustain itself using its pitfall traps while utilizing hardly any, any energy to do so. The emperor dragonfly wastes so much energy when compared to the antlion and its hunting strategies. And here's my second rebuttal. Though the antlion conserves valuable energy throughout its life by using the pitfall trap, it would die there if there was a lack of prey around to fall inside of its hole. When, coming, when it comes to hunting live prey, the emperor dragonfly is superior, even though it uses more energy because it can go find food, because it can go find a food source when one is not readily available, and it is not reliant off the chance something might fall into a small hole. The emperor dragonfly is, a pre is predatory in both its nymph and adult stages, so it can continue to gain energy for reproduction for the entirety of its life cycle, unlike the antlion, which is only predatory in its nymph stage. Okay, thank you. And we'll just do some closing statements. Um, for me, the antlion is a fearsome predator utilizing its strong poison-filled jaws to paralyze prey and well-designed traps to ensnare its victims. While the emperor dragonfly is fast, it wastes energy chasing its prey, while the antlion conserves energy waiting for prey to come to it. Overall, the antlion is far superior because the execution of its trapping techniques is flawless and its morphology specifically enables it to be a killing machine. Antlions are important to study as they're an integral part of the, of the ecosystem. Not only do antlions feed on invasive ants, they can also feed on crop pests such as cricket nymphs or small spiders. Research is still being conducted on the way that antlions sense their prey, with some claiming that they can feel the vibrations of their prey through the substrate of the pit and using that information to pinpoint the prey's location. And here's my closing statement. The emperor dragonfly is a graceful and deadly predator that uses its superior reflexes, vision, and predictive ability to hunt. Though the antlion conserves energy, it can easily starve due to lack of food, while the emperor dragonfly is able to search for food in places with limited supply of prey. In summary, the emperor dragonfly is a more adaptable and overall better predator than the antlion due to its superior hunting technique. The emperor dragonfly is useful and important to research because it can indicate how healthy a body of water is in any environment. They are also important to aquatic agriculture as they primarily feed off pests and mechanical transmitters of disease. Even though the graceful and deadly hunting techniques of the emperor dragonfly have been researched for years, entomologists are still discovering small minute details about this technique that further show that this is a far superior hunting strategy to other insects. All right, thank you very much, Lane.